In this video, we will be exploring strong mathematical induction and picking up where we left off in Chapter 5. Strong mathematical induction can be used in the same way that regular mathematical induction is used. The overall process is the same, but we need to use this if we have a situation where a single base case will not work. So for example, showing uh, P, of, P of 2 is not sufficient. You might need P of 0 and P of 1 as well. Uh, the other difference is because we're going to be dealing with uh, relations that have multiple steps involved, we need to show a hypothesis for all integers n less than or equal to k instead of just saying, uh, you know, this is true for p of k, we will prove it true for p of k of 1, right? So the, the process of showing it's true for p k plus 1 is still the same. Of course, that's your conclusion. And then the inductive step process is the same from there. Let's look at an example. Suppose b1, b2, b3 is the sequence defined by b1 equals 4, b2 equals 12, bk equals bk minus 2 plus bk minus 1 for all integers k greater than or equal to 3. Prove that b sub n is divisible by 4 for all integers n greater than 1. So I'd like to show or pull your attention here to this component. As soon as you see we have, this is what we call a second order relation because we have 1 and 2 previous terms involved, we have to use strong mathematical induction. So let us start out by showing our base case. So this is again the same general process as before. We'll have our base case then state our hypotheses and go from there. Now our goal is to show that if we can make this work for B1 and also for B2, well, we know those are true. Let's show this then for the next possible case, right? Because we said k greater than or equal to 3. So let us look at b sub 3. Now, according to this formula, b3 is equal to b k minus 2 makes that 1 plus k minus 1 makes that 2. And in our startup here, they gave us b1 and b2. So those values are... 4 plus 12, which gives us 16. Now, the other side of this is saying, well, we have to prove that bn is divisible by 4. So, can we also say that 4 divides b3? Well, if b3 is 16, is four, does 4 go into 16? And this is true because 4 times an integer, 4, gives us 16. So we've shown that our base case works out. Now, let's move on to our hypotheses. We will assume that this is true for all n less than or equal to k. And we're talking about here what we're trying to show, the divisible by 4 component. So we will assume b sub k is divisible by 4 for all integers n less than or equal to k. So we're saying here that any value you can plug in, it doesn't matter what it is, anywhere from we start here at b1, b2, so on and so forth, and it's just a step along the way, all the way through b sub k, this will work. So whatever you have, 4 will divide into all of those values. Now we are going to show that this is true for n equals k plus 1, in other words, the next possible term. And again, this is our goal. So can we show that 4 divides b sub k plus 1? Let's go ahead and consider for a moment b sub k plus 1. Now, we know that b sub k plus 1 is equal to the two previous terms added together. So b sub k plus 1 minus 2 is k minus 1 plus b sub k plus 1 minus 1 is just b sub k. 
And earlier, by hypothesis, we said that as long as n is less than or equal to k, 4 divides those values. So in other words, by hypothesis, we can say that b sub k minus 1 and b sub k are both divisible by 4. In other words, by hypothesis, we know that b sub k plus 1 is equal to 4 times some integer, let's call it x, and b sub k is also equal to 4 times some other integer, let's call it y, and this is for some x and y in the integers. Now, keep in mind this is not the only way that you can make that comment, but you do have to say somewhere that x and y are both integers because that's part of our definition of divisibility. So now by if substitution, plug in what we know. b sub k plus 1 is equal to 4x plus 4y, and go ahead and factor that. So that is 4 times x plus y. Now, since we've factored that out, and we're trying to show that b sub k plus 1 is divisible by 4, let some other integer, let's maybe call it z, so let z equal x plus y, which because the sum of integers is also integers, in other words, the integers are closed under addition, we know that z is also an integer. So again, by substitution, we know that b sub k plus 1 is equal to 4 times z, which, of course, is the definition of divisible by 4. Therefore, what can we say about this? Therefore, 4 divides b sub k plus 1, which is what we were trying to show. So then by strong mathematical induction, or just strong induction, we have shown that this will work for all b sub k plus 1. In other words, that b sub k, I'm sorry, b sub n is divisible by 4. And we're done. If anything, this example actually requires a little bit more involvement because we have to come up with an equation, so to speak, on our own. There are other examples where it's just nothing but substitution throughout, and we'll take a look at one of those in the next part of this video.